Hi everybody, welcome back to 10 Minute I.O. where you'll find bite-sized information on all topics related to industrial organizational psychology. My name is Stephen Jong. I'm an I.O. psychologist. Today will be a continuation of the Personnel Decision Series, Part 4, and we'll be talking about Brogdon, Kronbach, Gleaser, Utility Formula, or BCG for short. As in the past, let's say your company is considering the use of a new screening tool or assessment to hire employees. It can be any one of these or any one outside of the list that you see here. Question here is how can you demonstrate the value or utility of this new screening tool? BCG formula is unique in that it helps you estimate the amount of money your company would save if you were to use this assessment to make hiring decisions. We have a fairly straightforward formula. It requires a couple more pieces of information than in the past or past videos, but it is fairly straightforward. The first piece of information you'll need is the number of employees hired per year for a given year. So you want to take a look at, let's say, 2017 and look at all of the uh, employees that were hired for a given position. You're not going to take all of the employees hired for the company, but you're going to be looking at a specific position. Once you have that, for that specific position, you'll all also want to estimate the average tenure. So average length of time employees in a given position stay with your company. Keep in mind that this can vary dramatically from you know, when you're talking about high tech startups, coders typically stay no more than two years, whereas larger firms, uh, banking, finance, and so on, uh, those kind of sectors, will, you'll see tenures that are a lot longer than that. Third piece of information here is test validity. We've been talking about this in previous videos. This is the correlation between the scores on the new assessment and job performance or performance evaluation scores. We talked about what's called concurrent validation technique where you administer the assessment, this new assessment to your existing employees. And the reason why you do that is so that you have two pieces of information. One is scores on this new assessment plus for each candidate or each employee their performance evaluation scores. With those two pieces of information you can estimate the, the correlation between those two and that essentially becomes the validity coefficient and that's the number you would use here. The fourth, we're going to be using what's called a 40% rule. This was proposed by Hunter and Schmidt back in 82 and this says that a high performing employee is estimated to be about one standard deviation uh, in terms of performance from an average employee in value amounting to about 40% in salary difference. So if you were to take a, an employee who makes $100,000 a year 40% of that would be $40,000 per year, and $40,000 is what you would put into the formula. The fifth piece of information, we're going to be obtaining the mean standardized test score of selected candidates. Uh, this is ideally what you would do is you would administer the assessment and let's say you have 100 candidates and you administer the assessment to all 100 candidates. And let's say you select the top 30 and then reject the bottom 70. You would average the assessment score for the 30 and then from that number you would subtract the average uh, score of the rejected candidates and you would divide that whole thing by the standard deviation of uh, the, the entire pool. Now that's ideal but since we're using uh, employee, current employees what you would want to do is administer the assessment to however many employees you have in that current role and then you would establish a cutoff cutoff in terms of performance look at their performance evaluation scores and establish a cutoff let's say on a five point scale you establish a 3.2 as the cutoff now take all those people all those employees who are above that and look at their test scores on this new assessment and calculate an average assessment score for the top performers uh, in your employee sample and then do the same thing for the bottom and then you divide that number by the, the standard deviation of the assessment scores. I hope that makes sense. Let's go through a quick example. A growing startup uh, 
let's say, hired 52 Java programmers back in 2017. And for that Java programming group, or that role, the average length of time, or the average tenure is 2.2 years. Let's go with 0 0.30 for test validity. Again, this is the correlation between the existing employees' test scores on the new assessment and their performance evaluation. Using the 40% rule, we let's assume that each of these Java programmers make 100,000 a year. So we're going to take 40,000 as our standard deviation. And then for the formula, we have average score of hired minus average score of the rejected divided by the standard deviation of all test scores. So if you look at that 82.5, that is the average score on the assessment of the people that you would hypothetically hire. And then 68.2 would make up the average of the candidates who were rejected. And then 16.8 would be the standard deviation of all test scores. Again, since we're going to be administering this assessment to existing employees, you'll want to hypothetically visualize you know, what, the, what you would consider to be high performers versus not. So you're essentially dividing that group, your existing group, into half high performers and, and uh, average performers or below. And then using that division, you're going to uh, average or derive the two scores, the, the uh, average score of the hired or the high performers and then average score of the rejected. Here we have 0.85 as our mean standardized test score difference. Here's the formula. So uh, in terms of savings, I list all the, uh, the definitions for those terms that you see there. N is the number of hires per year. We said 52. Average tenure is 2.2 years. Validity coefficient we said was 0.3. Standard deviation of performance in dollars, uh, 40,000, which is you know, based on $100,000 a year salary. And then mean M represents mean standardized score of the selected candidates uh, or the difference. And that we determined was 0.85. And then one piece of information here that you'll want to subtract from this whole thing is the cost of testing. And that's the number of applicants times the number of cost per applicant. So 52 times $20 per applicant. If you have a lot more applicants, then that number would be higher. Nonetheless, um, let's just assume that it's $20 per applicant. And we're, we're roughly estimating at this point. So let's put in the numbers. We get the 52 employees, 2.2 years. 0.3 validity coefficient, $40,000 per year, 0.85 minus 1040. Again, the 1040 could be a lot higher depending on how many applicants you actually get. Roughly, this is the savings, $1,165,820. And what this means is that by using the new assessment to make hiring decisions over a 2.2 year period, your company would be saving roughly uh, 1.2 million dollars. I hope that was useful. I'll be posting more videos in the next few days. Please come back, view additional videos. Thank you again for watching.